inside of this capsule I have a very familiar wasp species. In fact, it is the first wasp species that I received this thing from. Throughout the world there are fascinating things. I found some of the most extraordinary things are the ones that are unobtainable. For instance, what lies in the deepest depths of our ocean. Or what lies beyond our reach in our solar system. It's like when you look back at an old photograph and you realize there was something there that you may not have anymore. Something now that is unobtainable. We take many things for granted. When we see an abundance, look at the American bison. We don't see it when it's right in plain sight. But when it's gone, that's a whole different story. For me, that is what Sting Week is all about. Let's see if there's something out there that perhaps wasn't on anybody's radar. Let's start right here, where we left off at a point some time back. I'm Alex, the host of The Great Outdoors. I'm here in the heart of Florida, Central Florida, testing the stings of various stingy insects. Right now we're focusing on social hymenopteras, mostly including paper wasps. This right here is a very familiar species. This is Palestis carolina. In fact, it was one of my first insect sting videos I did just after the cow killer sting video. Now it is a pretty large vespid wasp. It does form colonies on roof eaves and can be found in public places. It is red in coloration and they are social wasps. And they're actually a little more intelligent than people give them credit for. Red paper wasp, of which there are two unique species, both some of the largest colonies of any wasp species. They construct these nests by chewing wood fibers and secreting a mixture of wood and saliva on the nest. With their nest almost always being located in a well-protected area like a cavity in a tree or under a roof eave. In early spring, a few surviving wasps, the foundresses, find their nest location occasionally in the same hive as the previous year. They will lay several eggs in the chambers. There can be as many as eight foundresses. Typically, there is a dominant foundress or female wasp with many subordinate wasps. We are used to seeing the queen as being the larger of the members, but not in this case. It's much more complex than that. Usually the first foundress is not the largest, but does have the largest reproductive organs, and she is the dominant egg-laying foundress. She shows her dominance by laying the most eggs and typically having the most reproductive success. Other queens or foundresses will do everything they can to ensure some of their eggs survive. They will actually travel to multiple colonies in order to increase the likelihood their eggs will survive. They will even share hives with other species of Palestes, capitalizing on the defensive resources of others in turn giving them a better overall reproductive success. However, typically the most dominant foundress typically monitors her eggs the whole time, and that's what makes her the queen of the hive. Males don't actually possess stingers, so we'll just go ahead and let this one go. It's out of here. This, however, is a female, Palestis Carolina, and I will induce a sting and see just how painful she actually is. Now, these are social wasps, and it is said that social wasps have a more intense sting than some of the other wasp species, like some of the solitary wasp species, but that's for another video. Now, this wasp right here, I will induce a sting right here on my forearm, and we'll see just how painful that actually is. I have been stung by Plessis Carolina in the past. I related it to about the equivalent of a pinprick, so we're going to test it again and make sure that was an accurate sting and that I got a full sting from that insect. Let's go ahead and get this wasp into the entomology forceps and see how painful Palestis Carolina actually is. I have a proper placement on her. Now you can see her blue iridescent wings. Before I lose this insect, I'd like to go ahead and induce a sting so we can truly see the sting potential of this insect. On the count of three. One, two, three. Here we go. Oh yeah, I feel it. Okay, so I've already received a sting. Oh gosh, it stung me twice. All right, without a doubt, I've received several good stings. I have a feeling I'm have multiple injection sites. Yep, it burns, but the immediate pain is probably, so far, I mean, it's definitely noticeable. Um, I will circle the sting as soon as I get the wasp back under control and show the area, but it's already turning red. You can see the red whelp already forming right there. All right, so this is Palestis Carolina, the red paper wasp, a social wasp found here in Florida. And the sting 
has been done again. Let's go ahead and get her under control. To prove just how non-violent these wasps are, we'll go ahead and release her and I'll just sit here and she'll be gone and they have no reason to want to come to people. Um, so let's go ahead and put her out of the capsule. Bye girl. It's been real. She's off. We're right at like two minutes. I filmed the release and this has already whelped up pretty good. Cold air. Um, actually got to do some stuff by no means will this sting inhibit me from doing anything that I want to do these are the three stings from the Plastis Carolina I received about six hours ago um, the line is pretty faint there's just three faint red marks nothing too serious and certainly don't feel any kind of pain whatsoever every once in a while when it gets to moving or I bump it it itches but that's it no serious side effects to being stung by Plastis Carolina